Hello, and welcome to Unknowable, the podcast where we talk about all things mysterious, unusual, or unknowable. I'm Justine. And I'm Gray. Some weeks we break down one larger mystery between the two of us. Other weeks we pick two smaller mysteries on a theme and teach each other about them based on our own independent research. This week... We had a good one. Good one. This was Gray's choice. Oh yeah. Which anybody who knows Gray will not be surprised by this. No. This is our second hip-hop related... It is our second hip-hop one. Unknowable mystery. Also our second assassination episode. Yes. We have two famous hip-hop assassinations. Yep. Tupac and Biggie. Hell yeah. Who killed him? Who, who sh- killed him? Who shot you? Are they still alive? Maybe. I mean, at least Tupac might be. Right. I don't think Biggie's still alive. I didn't find anything about that, unfortunately. No. As much Sad. as I would like that to be true. I would like for both of them to still be alive. <laughs> I'm going to come out and just say it at the beginning of this, this podcast. I am so far Team Biggie that I can't even describe it. Like, I respect Tupac. Yeah. And I think that he is a great musician, but I do not like his music. Wow. I will listen to Biggie till the day I die, and will probably never listen to a full Tupac song. Yeah. I was just saying that I haven't really heard too much Tupac a little bit, but nothing has ever, like, drawn me in like crazy. Right. Definitely also prefer Biggie if I had to choose. Oh, yeah. East Coast. Yeah. All day. Yeah. That's how I like Which my hip hop. The East Coast West Coast rivalry is going to come in. It is. To this these stories. Right. So, all right. I'm going to start. Yes. Tupac died first. Okay. Not by much, but slightly or, or did he? Or did he? Or did he? All right. So, probably most people know at least a bit about this. Right. As I did. But maybe you don't know everything and it's pretty interesting. So, Tupac Obviously a very successful American hip-hop artist, yep. West Coast hip-hop artist, uh, fatally shot on September 7th, 1996 in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas. And he was only 25. Right? Yeah. I'm already older than Tupac was. <sighs> That's, like, just disappointing on its own. Right. Like, not to even just to mention that he was, like, such a successful artist. Right. And, like, helped, like, shape hip-hop. But he was 25. Right. Also, he has the same birthday as me. Really? Not the same year, obviously, but June the, 16th. Seriously? Yeah. Interesting. Me and Tupac. Know. I got, I'm, Jackie Chan is wow. born the same day as me. I'm sure if you looked up celebrities with your birthday, you'd find somebody cool. Somebody. Yeah. I think Tupac's the coolest one I can think of. Probably. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. Night of his death. He's hanging out at the Bruce Selden versus Mike Tyson boxing match uh, with Suge Knight the head of Death Row Records. Yes. Which was founded in 1991. Tupac had just been signed less than a year before in September of 1995. So he was still fairly new, but he was like one of their star artists. Oh, yeah. Um, so they were at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, just chilling. Uh, they were leaving the match when one of Suge Knight's associates, Trayvon Trey Lane, who was a member of the Mob Piru Bloods, which was a gang in Compton that named themselves after Piru Street in Compton. Okay. So I like, but I'm like, pure, right? Right. <laughs> Otherwise, the bloods are coming. Uh, so he was shit. associated with legit bloods. Oh yeah, like the legit blood gang. Part of the reason that Death Row Records ended up like going downhill was because they ended up associating with so many criminals and like gang members that the violence just got to be too much. Right. Um. So yeah. So, um. Yeah. So one of his associates who was associated with the bloods spotted Orlando Baby Lane Anderson, who was a member of the Crips, in the lobby. So this is like, oh, they're all leaving the fight. Um, apparently earlier that same year in May, Anderson, the member of the Crips, along with a group of Southside Crips, had robbed Trayvon Lane in a footlocker store. So there was already, like, aside from them being Bloods and Crips, there was, like, already... Beef? Yeah, there was some beef. Um, so Lane told Tupac, like, dude... And Tupac attacked Orlando, of course, asking him if he was from the South, Southside Compton Crips, and punched him in the face, knocking him to the ground. Um, Tupac and Suge Knight's entourage, some of the others were also Bloods gang members, okay. assisted in the assault, was captured on hotel surveillance, and broken up by security. So this was just like a, probably like a couple hours before this shit went down. This right. was like very, very recent. Um, so Tupac was planning to head to club 662, 662, I don't know, some club that Suge Knight owned. Um, like Tupac essentially like told his fiance Kadeda Jones about the fight. He changed his clothes and they took off and left. 
um, with an entourage of around 10 different cars. So Jesus. Tupac, I believe, no, Suge Knight, I believe, was driving and Tupac was the passenger of the car. No, Tupac must have been driving. Oh, damn, I don't know. It would have been good to know. Would have been good to know. Damn it. Um, damn. Anyways, they're in the same car. Um, interestingly enough. I think Suge Knight was driving. I think he might have been driving. Yes. Yes. If I remember that correctly, he was driving and Tupac was in the passenger seat. Right. All I know is that the people who shot Tupac pulled up on... I think they pulled up on Suge Knight's side. No, they must have pulled up on Tupac's side. Shit, man. Failed. Failed. <laughs> Anyways. Yes. Um, so interestingly enough, he was supposed to have both like one of their bodyguards and his girlfriend, Kadeda Jones, in the car with them. Right. And kind of at the last minute, he like changed those plans and had them go in a separate car. Interesting. Which is kind of weird. Like, maybe it didn't mean anything. But That would be weird, too. Like, if you think about it in the context of your own life, having, right. like, your fiancé. Yeah. Like, no, you take that car. Yeah. It's like, dude, like, why are why? we going to ride together? Right? Because, like, it was just Tupac and Suge Knight in the car. So it's not like they had a whole group in right. that car that it was like, oh, there's no room. Like, just head in that car. It was like... Just the two of them. Right. That's weird. So, yeah, kind of weird. And, like, not having a bodyguard with them. Right. It's like, okay. Um, so, around 11, they were stopped by Las Vegas Boulevard, um, on Las ba- Vegas Boulevard, by officers from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Bike Patrol for playing the car stereo too loudly. Wow. And not having license plates on the car. Um, they found the plates in the trunk of the car, so they were good. Why... Didn't they have plates on the car? I don't know. And why were they in the trunk? Like, that's a weird Like, you just have them in the trunk and you're just like, oh, whoops. Yeah, Yeah, forgot. (laughs) Forgot about that. We took those off and put them in the trunk. Yeah, as you do. I don't know. I don't even sure, honestly, why this was included in the info. Because, like, I assumed that it was relevant. And then as I did my research, I was like, this isn't really that relevant. But hey. Uh, Maybe just the fact that it held them up by a few minutes. Like, we talk about all that faint stuff. Like, with, like, if they hadn't been stopped even just for a few minutes, then maybe. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were all good. No citation. They were fine. Uh, like five minutes later. So yeah, it was relevant time-wise, I guess. Five minutes later, they were stopped at a red light intersection of East Flamingo Road and Koval Lane in front of the Maxim Hotel when a vehicle occupied by two women pulled up on their left side. Shakur exchanged words with them and invited them to Club 662 because why not? Although, like, his girlfriend's in another car, so, like, okay. Maybe that's fiance. why he wanted his fiancée to ride in another car, so he right? can holla at ladies while he's driving. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really think about that part either. I was like, oh, invited them to the club, and I was like, wait a minute. You're just looking at the car ahead, like, is he talking to those girls <laughs> yeah. in that car? You, you can see him, like, right? hanging out the door, <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> Classic Tupac. Uh, yeah, okay. So then, like, five minutes later, um, a white four-door late-model Cadillac pulled up to... Suge Knight's right side rolled down a window and rapidly fired gunshots at Tupac, getting 14 shots total in. He only hit Tupac four times, uh, twice in the chest, once in the arm, and once in the thigh. And one of those must have been one of the chest uh, bullets went into his right lung. Uh, Suge Knight was only hit in the head by, like, bullet fragments. He was, like, basically fine. Hmm. Um, Yeah, so he got off pretty unscathed, really. So the car had a flat tire, presumably from one of the missed shots, and... Even though Suge Knight was a bit injured, he was able to drive him, the two of them, about a mile from the site. Uh, They were pulled over by bike patrol, got paramedics, uh, took them both to the University Medical Center of Southern Nevada. Um, Yeah, I guess... So there was this music video director, Gobi Rahimi, that he did an interview later that while he was at the hospital that night, he received news from a death row marketing employee that the shooters had called the record label and threatened Tupac. I'm assuming, like, earlier that same night. Interesting. Um, yeah, the director told Las Vegas police this, but said they claimed to be understaffed. So. Oh. Great. Um, yeah, I guess they were carrying Tupac to the emergency department, and I guess he said aloud to somebody that he was dying, which is sad. Um, he was heavily sedated. He was placed on life support machines, um, ultimately put under a barbiturate-induced coma after repeatedly trying to get out of bed. Yeah. Damn. I know. Um, he was visited by his fiance um, and regained consciousness apparently briefly when she played Don McLean's Vincent on the CD player next to his bed. Huh. Which is really sad. Um, Suge Knight was released from the hospital the day after the shooting on September 8th, but he didn't speak to anybody until September 11th. He told officers he, quote, heard something but saw nothing the night of the shooting. It's an odd thing to say. Interesting. 
Um, officers at the time of Tupac's hospitalization said they had no leads. Um, Sergeant Kevin Manning, who's a name that will come up a couple times, said during the week that officers did not receive, quote, a whole lot of cooperation from Tupac's entourage. So we were saying earlier, yeah, Tupac was not a fan of the police. No. So it's not really surprising in general that, I mean, these are, again, also like some of these people are gang members. Right. See, I wonder if all of Tupac's entourage didn't already know exactly who killed Tupac. Right. And like, of course, they're not going to tell the cops because you don't snitch no matter what. Yeah. So I wonder, like, how many people knew it already. Exactly. And it would, like, just the cops don't know. Yeah. You know? The cops don't know. Like, the cops suspect, but they don't know because nobody is giving anything up. Right. Yeah. Um, apparently, the, again, the director, Gobi Rahimi, and other members of Tupac's group, uh, the Outlaws, guarded him at the hospital due to their fear that whoever shot him, quote, was going to come finish him off. Hmm. And some of them kind of alluded to the fact that they had weapons in the hospital with them. Would not be surprised. <laughs> not surprised. Um, so he was in the critical care unit. Uh, so Friday, September 13th. Holy shit, I just realized it was Friday the 13th that he died. Oh, wow. Whoa. Damn. Um, he died of respiratory failure that led to cardiac arrest after the removal of his right lung. Uh, doctors attempted to revive him, but they couldn't stop the hemorrhaging. And his mother, Afini, made the decision to cease medical treatment. And he was pronounced dead at 4.03 p.m. Hmm. Sucks. Um, so those are the, the facts yes. of the story. Um, obviously there's a lot of kind of stuff around the police dealing with the case, maybe bungling a few things, which isn't that surprising. Um, there are like a lot of things that like the police said happened that other people said didn't happen and things that people said the police should have done that they didn't do. Um, one of my favorite parts of this, which I don't even know is true or not. In 2014, a police officer who claimed that he was there for Tupac's last moments said that Tupac refused to state who shot him. So even Tupac, I mean, presumably he could look over and see who was shooting at him. So he probably did know. Um, The officer asked Tupac if he saw the person who shot him and Tupac responded with fuck you to the officer, which was his last words. Fuck yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. Paramedics and other officers present at the scene did not report hearing him say those words, but... I'm going to believe that. I'm going to choose believe to it. believe it. Yeah, I would like to believe that. Yeah. It's pretty good. I feel like that he would have been happy with that. Oh, yeah. So That is very Tupac to him in his last words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, some of the examples are um, Yaki Gaddafi, yeah. who was another rapper and founder and member of the group The Outlaws. He was in the car directly behind Tupac at the time of the shooting and supposedly was able to at least see the driver of the Cadillac. Um had said that he had seen this and he wanted to keep it confidential, but um, he ended up not having a chance to get interviewed by the Las Vegas police because they just didn't bother to bring him in, despite knowing that he supposedly saw the shooter, which you'd think would be reason to bring him in, like, immediately. Right. Um, A few days after the shooting, he left Vegas, he traveled around, landed in New Jersey. Um, At that time, so some investigators in Compton assembled mugshots of several gang members, which actually included Anderson, the guy that they attacked in the lobby. Orlando Anderson? Yes. Yeah. Um, And hand-delivered them to Vegas. Um, That detective, Kevin Manning, said that detectives called Gaddafi's lawyer to set up a meeting so he could be shown the photos to potentially identify the shooter, which could very well have been Anderson. Right. Um, But calls from the lawyer were never, by the lawyer were never returned. Um, But they didn't bother to try to locate him. They, like, didn't Hmm. try to go get him. And then in November, just like two months after Tupac shooting, Gaddafi was shot um, by another member of the outlaws, Napoleon's cousin, apparently by accident, shot in the head by accident. Not sure how that happens. Um, And that man admitted to the crime and served like years in prison. So they never got a chance to talk to him and see who he had actually seen. Convenient. Yeah. I know. There's quite a few people who died. And again, like we're talking about gang members. Right. Right. So it's not altogether like, and I think it's could very easily go the direction of like, yeah, these were all just coincidental deaths of all these people who were potentially involved or like witness, but right. also maybe a little too convenient that like you could just easily write off like, oh, they're gang members. Like, of right. course they got shot by. On one hand, whatever. they were they were living high risk lifestyles. Yeah. But on the other hand, what better people to have killed than people living high risk lifestyles? Right. That you can easily just shoot in the head and say, oh, it was an accident. It was gang violence. Boom, yeah. done. No investigation. Right. 
and maybe have it pinned on somebody else or whatever. I mean, you maybe have some shit on a lot of these people. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of times when gang members have a lot of information on them at the police station. Maybe they haven't been able to get them yet, but they know shit that they've done or that they've been involved with. So like, how hard would it be to tell somebody to take the fall for something? Right. If they knew they had some bigger shit on him and they were like, Hey, get, you know, seven years in prison, take the rap for this. Right. And we won't bust you for this other stuff. Like there might be some people who were like, all right, right. That's way less than I would get if they busted me for the shit I actually did. Right. So I read somewhere that Orlando Anderson would have almost been definitely indicted for the murder yeah. of Tupac. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. 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 They, um, okay. So, yeah. So we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. Um, bodyguard Frank Alexander, who I believe was the bodyguard that was supposed to be in the car, but at the last minute he was like, no. Um, He told the Los Angeles Times in 1997 that he had never been asked by the Las Vegas police to view photos of possible suspects in the case, despite having observed the shooting and having seen the men in the car from which the shots were fired. But they never talked to him. That's weird. Like, why? Um, Orlando Anderson, the man that was assaulted by Tupac hours before the shooting, was detained by Los Angeles police in Compton. Wait, what? Yeah. In Compton a month after the shooting in an unrelated investigation, but was never charged in Tupac's murder. Um, and then he was also later killed in a shootout at a Compton car wash in May 98. Yep. Over a drug deal. Yeah. So he's also dead. So Orlando Anderson probably would have been indicted, but he didn't live long enough to be indicted. Right. And they just never even charged him. Right. Which right. Just they had the opportunity. So they had him in custody. Hot. Yeah. But maybe they didn't have like a strong enough case built up yet. Right. Which I, I really like just don't think that they did enough to build a case. Right. Like, I think it was easy to just write it off as like, oh, like, yeah, like hip-hop, drug, gang, right. beef. It was a drive-by. Right. You know, they're like, whatever. Right. Um, the year following the shooting, Suge Knight stated during an ABC primetime live interview that he did not know who had shot Tupac, but would never tell officers if he did. So again, a lot of that, like, street code. Yep. Like, even if he knew. G-code. Which, which to me, I feel like somebody saying, like, I don't know who killed him, but if I did, I wouldn't tell you, like, sometimes means to me that you do know. Right. I mean, I think if anybody in this situation knows who killed Tupac, I think Suge Knight knows. Suge Knight I think he probably knows. is a sketchy individual. Yeah. He's, he's in prison right now. Yes. He's in prison for running somebody over with his car. Yeah. Like in like a, like a, uh, in and out burger parking lot. He killed somebody. Yeah. Yeah. He killed him at, at least one man. At he's, least one man. He's been yeah. convicted of killing one person. Oh yeah. Let alone like all the other people who he may or may not have had killed. Yeah. One of whom may or may not have been Tupac. <laughs> may or may not have been Tupac. We don't know. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get to that. Oh, yeah. Um, EDI Mean, who was a collaborator of Tupac's and, again, a member of the Outlaws. Not not the dictator. <laughs> what? From Africa. EDI Mean. Oh. I did not know that was a thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, that, so the other guy's last name was Qaddafi? Yeah. Like K-A-D-A-F-I. Yeah. 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 So, like, Qaddafi was a Libyan dictator. Right. And EDI Mean was a dictator from somewhere in Africa. Weird. Well, this is like E-D-I, like E dot D dot I. But right. still. Well, so it's a stylized version of EDI Mean. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Hmm. 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 Self-styled dictators. He said he was positive that law enforcement knew, quote, what happened and added, this is America. We found Bin Laden. True. True. He witnessed the shooting and saw at least one occupant of the car, but said he was never asked to view possible suspects by police either. Right. So we have like, again, he had an entourage of 10 cars. 10 individuals. That, you know, maybe not all of them were close enough, but like clearly there were several people in several different cars who saw what happened and at least saw a side profile. Some of them were able to see several people in the car and nobody was questioned. 10 cars and the the shooters pulled up on either side of Tupac's car. Mm. That means that all the people on one side of all of the cars potentially saw the shooters. Yeah. Which is 20 people on just one half of the cars, let alone the people on the other half of the cars. Right. Yeah. I don't it's, know. It's a lot of people, and it doesn't seem like that many people were asked to talk. Um, hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so in 2002, the Los Angeles Times published a two-part story by Chuck Phillips, who was an American, is an American writer and journalist who worked for the LA Times for like 13 years. Um, titled Who Killed Tupac Shakur, based on a year-long investigation, he reported that, quote, the shooting was carried out by a Compton gang called the Southside Crips to avenge the beating of one of its members by Tupac a few hours earlier. Orlando Anderson, the Crip whom Shakur had attacked, fired the fatal shots. 
Las Vegas police considered Anderson as a suspect and interviewed him only once, briefly. Anderson was killed nearly two years later in an unrelated gang shooting. So Chuck Phillips believed that it was Orlando Anderson done. Yeah. Um, which, again, is the most credible theory. They already had beef. They were, you know, involved in two different gangs. He had just kicked his ass, like... Two hours before, so... Orlando Anderson was definitely, like, a violent individual, too. Yeah. Like, capable of doing a drive-by. Oh, yeah. So, definitely seems to be the most popular... Again, maybe not most popular, but most credible theory. Yes. Um, his article also implicated East Coast rappers, including the Notorious B.I.G. Uh, of course. Tupac's rival at the time, and several New York criminals. So, Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. the Notorious B.I.G., yep. of course, denied a role... In the murder. Um, his family produced computerized invoices suggesting that he was recording a song in New York City recording studio the night Tupac was shot. His manager, Wayne Barrow, and rapper Lil Cease publicly denied that he had a role in the crime and said they were with him in the studio that night. Which, of course, does not mean that he wasn't connected. Right. They weren't saying that Notorious B.I.G. literally shot him. Right. Just that he set it up. Interesting side note with all this. Biggie and Tupac were, like, not friends, but mm. they were friendly, oh, like... Yeah. They, they knew each other in the industry for, like, yeah. a while and, like, had recorded a song together. And yeah. there's, like, photos of them, like, hanging out, throwing, like, gang signs up. Yep. So, like, they weren't, like, at each other's throats. No. I think some of that was manufactured both by them as a way to sell records and by, like, the media and police as a way to just, like, explain away mm. violence. Right. Oh, yeah. East Coast, West Coast. It's that, it's that simple. Right. And there was definitely yeah. an element of that, but I don't know. It just seems a little... Seems a little convenient and a little flimsy. Yeah, they did. They had some beef, which I think I go into a little bit later. But, um, yeah, it's not necessarily, but it's an interesting connection just to think, like, maybe right. Notorious B.A.G. from the East Coast, like, set up this little hit. Um, which, of course, Notorious B.I.G. himself was fatally shot six months later. Which, more on that later. Yeah, more on that later. Um the second article in Phillips' series assessed the murder investigation and said that the Las Vegas police had mismanaged the investigation. Not surprisingly. Um, they discounted the fight that occurred just hours before the shooting. They failed to follow up with members of his entourage who witnessed the shooting, of course. Um, and they failed to follow up with a lead from a witness who spotted a white Cadillac similar to the car involved. So they kind of just let a bunch of shit go. Yep. Which is not surprising. Um... An Israeli newspaper reported in 2011 that the FBI released documents as a result of a Freedom of Information Act request that revealed its investigation of the Jewish Defense League for extorting protection money from Tupac and other rappers after making death threats against them. What the fuck? Wow, that's left field. I've yeah. never heard of that. I n have never heard of that. This was like one of the most random huh. little things that I read that like didn't really have too much to it. Um... The Jewish Defense League is a Jewish far-right religious political organization in the United States whose stated goal is to, quote, protect Jews from anti-Semitism by whatever means necessary. Um, classified as a right-wing terrorist group by the FBI in 2001 and is considered a radical organization. So Interesting. Which is supposedly known for terrorist acts or at least terrorist plans. They, hmm. of course, claim to not be a terrorist organization, but... Who does? Who really does? So... Hmm. That was just, just, like, one random thing that I saw that I was like, okay, huh. sure, like... I don't know if I... I don't know if I buy that, because Tupac was a pretty outspokenly political person whose mother was in the Black Panthers. Yeah. And was definitely not the type of person that you would extort money out of if you were at all, like, conscious of political issues in America, I feel like. Yeah. I feel like the Jewish Defense League and Tupac would have been roughly on the same side. I would have was, like, thought against so. the government and against, like, the establishment. Yeah, I'm concerned, like, just the fact that the FBI has documents of this is interesting, that, like, there was proof of them extorting money. Right. Which, again, doesn't mean that they're involved in his death. Right. It's possible they extorted money and people were like, okay, great. True, yeah. Cool. But. Interesting. Yeah, random. Okay. okay. Um, so, very recently, there was a USA Network documentary called Unsolved the Tupac and Biggie Murders released last year, um, in which Dwayne Keith Keffy D. Davis, a Crips gang a leader. Keefy D. Keefy D. Damn, Keefy D. Damn, I knew I was going to mispronounce something. <laughs> Keef is in, like, when you grind weed. Damn it. Keef is the, the like, THC crystals that are left over in the isn't grinder. Isn't it spelled, like, K-E-E-F? Yeah. But yeah, it's, isn't it K-E-E-F-E? Like, no, it's K-E-F-F-E. Okay. 
which is okay. Well, it could have been misspelled in the thing that I read. Maybe I'm incorrect, but it's, I, it's I totally just assumed it was Keefy D. We'll just say Keefy D. Okay. Just to be safe. Just to be safe. <laughs> just to be safe. Uh, a Crips gang leader in California and Orlando Anderson's uncle okay. claimed to have been in the car with Tupac's murderer when the shots were fired. This was like in a documentary. Dude was just like, yep. Um, he declined the name the shooter, citing street code. <laughs> Literally street code. Um, he was apparently in the car and heard some shots, quote, just come from the back seat. Um, he made this revelation under both immunity from prosecution and apparently he has cancer. So he kind of like used the words like, I've got nothing else to lose. Right. Why not? Um, according to an Esquire report, he said, quote, I was a Compton kingpin drug dealer. I'm the only one alive who can really tell you the story about the Tupac killing. Which like, I believe because I would almost like, wouldn't be surprised if a bunch of other people involved are not alive anymore. Right. Or exactly. speaking if they are alive. Right. Like Sugar Knight. Yeah. Um, he claims that he and his crew drove around the Vegas Strip in search of Tupac that night. Quote, all the chicks was like Tupac, and he was like, hey, like a celebrity, like he was in a parade. If he wouldn't even have been out the window, we would have never seen him. Wow. I, like, very curiously did wonder if the girls, because it wasn't, it seemed like it was a few minutes apart, so I don't know if he was still, oh, interesting. like, out the window talking to those girls when they shot him, but right. I think, again, that was, like, something that could have been done to, like... Like a like bait. Yeah, some kind of bait. Because they knew Tupac is, like, going to lean out the window to talk to some girls. Yeah. And so they have... Interesting. That yeah. That would make a whole lot and of he, sense. Yeah, he even says that, like, we wouldn't have known, like, that he was right there if he hadn't been doing that. Because they saw him, like, leaning out the window and they were like, oh, shit, there he is. Right. So, huh. but they had been looking for him. I could see um, that. Yeah. So this confession prompted the Las Vegas police to spend actually several months reviewing the case again last year. But as of July of last year, they said it was still an open homicide case. So they hadn't made any... People were kind of, like theorizing that like oh the police are going to charge somebody now they've got you know they've got somebody but they said no um so as of now it's still an open case apparently um so whole bunch of different theories that i guess technically being one because this guy says that he was there but who fucking knows right i mean if he's got cancer and he's got immunity like why not say they they can't do shit right he could also just be saying it yeah to get some he's not saying he killed him and the guy he's saying that maybe was the killer is dead long dead anyways right so nothing's really going to come of that except he can say like yeah i'm the only one who knows right which is kind of a cool thing in like an unsolved murder after all this time right um <clears throat> so multiple different theories um a former los angeles police detective named greg kading claims that sean diddy combs was at the center of the murder he claims that combs we were just talking before the episode about what to call diddy <laughs> Because he's had so many stupid names. And I don't know which one sticks in my consciousness the most. No. I think, I, I think Diddy. Is he currently just Diddy? I think so. I don't even know. He was Diddy Dirty Money for a while. Oh, God, yeah. That that might have been the worst. Yeah. I know. I was like, do we call him what he was called at the time, which I think was Puff Daddy? Puff Daddy. Puffy. Puffy. Ugh. Sean Puffy Sean, Combs. Yeah, that. Sean Combs. I don't know. Awful. Combs. Yeah. So, Sean Diddy Combs Sean seems Diddy. to be... Which let's, is just go with, let's just go with Diddy. Just Diddy. Um, he claims Diddy offered $1 million to aforementioned Crips gang member Keefy D to kill both Tupac and Suge Knight after a highly publicized beef that they had, which also included Biggie, um, and claims that Orlando Anderson did the actual shooting in like a last minute shuffle. Um, in the same report, Caden claims that Suge Knight then hired a Bloods gang member named Poochie to kill Biggie six months later as retaliation, um, despite Biggie apparently not really being involved or aware of the plans, or was he? Or was we don't know. Um, so yeah, immediately after the shooting, rumors of Biggie's involvement surfaced and spread. The rapper was suspected to have orchestrated the shooting as a result of their ongoing conflict. Um, so yeah, they came up together in the early '90s. Tupac was even kind of like a mentor of sorts to Biggie. Yeah. Um, but they went south around like '95-ish when they became embroiled in an epic East Coast West Coast rivalry. Right. Um, it was believed to have been sparked. When Biggie released his 1994 song, Who Shot Ya? Who Shot Ya? A possible diss track that is said to be about Tupac getting shot and robbed in New York City. Uh, two years later, in 96, Tupac released Hit Him Up, in which he alluded to having an affair with Biggie's wife, Faith Evans. Which is like... Oh, shit, yeah. He shit. did marry Faith Evans, didn't he? Who, Biggie? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yep. Damn. So, hmm. yeah. So, Biggie's supposedly involved for that reason. Um, Suge Knight was suspected. Of course. Despite the fact that he was driving the car. Um, That's the only thing that 
throws me off about it. I can't imagine that if somebody doing a drive by could be that good to miss you on purpose. Right. And I wouldn't trust someone else with my life. No. And like they got 14 shots off. Like, I mean, right. they only hit him four times, but still like they were just firing like crazy into the car. Like, right. I mean, it's lucky as hell that Suge Knight didn't get murdered. He didn't or... get hit at all. Really? Well, I mean, yeah. Right. Hit at all. No, he got some like shrapnel and that was it. Which so, maybe that does speak. Maybe fucking Orlando well, yeah. Anderson was like a really good shot, and that's why he hired him specifically. It's both like really suspicious, but also I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it works on both sides because you're like weird that he wouldn't get shot at all. You'd think at the very least he would have gotten injured if not killed himself too. Right. Somebody was just firing into the car. They're both in the front of the car. Right. But at, yeah, at the same time, it's like yeah, would you trust somebody to be good enough? To fire 14 shots into the car and not hit you? Unless the plan was for that g- car full of girls to pull up, Tupac's hanging out the window, yeah. so his whole torso is out the window, like, hollering right. at these girls, <laughs> and that's when he was going to take the shots, Yeah. making it as less dangerous as possible for Suge Knight. Right. And who better to position Tupac, like, than to say, like, yo, we're going to be driving down this street at this time. Right have the girls pull up next to him and I know Tupac's gonna hang out the window. The weird thing is, though, that I'm pretty sure, again, that, like, the girl, the car with the girls had been on one side and the shooter was on a different side. And again, I don't think that that was, like, happening at the same moment. Interesting. Okay. It had the it down, like, in minutes, and I'm not sure how they know exactly, like, 11.05 or whatever. Right. He, like, hollered at these girls. And then 11.10, he was shot. Interesting. Because they could obviously know the time he was shot, I guess, more. But, like, how did they know... It was, like, five minutes before they saw these girls. Right, and then somebody in the car was saying, like, oh, yeah, it's probably right. five minutes, yeah. Yeah, it must have been, like, Suge Knight, I guess, who said that, or some one of the other people in the entourage, but... Right. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, yeah, he... Supposedly, Tupac was planning to leave Death Row Records um, in order to launch his own label, and he owed Death Row Records, like, $3 million. So not only did he owe this money, but he was, like, a you know, their big star, and he was going to be leaving. Yeah, he was so, worth... Tupac was worth more to Suge Knight dead than alive. Yeah. Yeah, he... uh, The theory was that if Tupac was killed, Death Row and therefore Suge Knight could make money from any of his unreleased material. Which they released tons of Tupac albums after he died. Oh, yeah. Like seven albums or something like that? Oh, yeah. Um, The irony here is that Death Row Records' success started to decline after the death of Tupac. Again, their star artist. Right. So... There wasn't much going on in Death Row except for Tupac. Yeah, not the greatest plan. Um, Suge Knight, of course, denied all claims, and he actually stood behind a new documentary released in 2017 that claims that Knight's ex-wife, Sharitha Golden, and Reggie Willis Jr., the former head of security for Death Row Records, had actually plotted a hit on him in order to gain control of the label. And, of course, Golden has publicly denied... Like, every single one of these theories is like, blah, 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 that person denied the accusation. Like, of right, course they of did. Of course they did. So she says, no, that didn't mm. happen. Of um, course he would back... The documentary that A, exonerates him, and yeah. B, implicates his ex-wife and her new husband. Right? Of and course. how, like, again, if we're going to talk about, like, the accuracy of somebody shooting, like, so the idea here is that they were actually trying to kill him, and they they managed to fire 14 shots and didn't hit him once and right. hit Tupac four times. Right. I don't think that's true. No. So. And if we're going, like, if you think of Suge Knight's... A big dude. Mm. Like, he's big. And, like, not just, like, he's bigger heavy, than Tupac. but he's, like, he's got, like, a big frame. Yeah. Tupac's this skinny little dude. Yeah. Like, if you're going to shoot 14 shots and hit somebody, you're going to hit Suge Knight. Yeah. Unless you're aiming for Tupac. Exactly. Of co- And, of course, yeah. Suge Knight's, like, ego says, so like, no, they were trying to kill me. Yeah. I'm more they important They want to take Tupac. control of Death Row. Like, okay. I don't know okay. if you can tell, but I have a... I have a lot of disdain for for Suge Knight. Suge Knight. Yeah. Well, they Death Row went bankrupt like 10 years after this, so... Good. Because of a whole bunch of shit, including, like, Suge Knight going to jail. Going oh, to yeah. prison for something at the time. I don't even remember what he went to prison for at the time. Yeah. Suge Knight's just, like, a generally terrible person. Yeah, he's not a great guy. Um. So, those are all the theories of who killed him. Right. But then we get into the theories of him still being alive. Which is way more interesting. Way more interesting. These are so much more fun. Um... So, for the record, my favorite theory of who killed him is probably the most credible one that Orlando Jones did. I think did. Orlando Anderson. Wow, yes, yes. <laughs> I think, I, I do believe that Orlando Anderson pulled the trigger yeah. and shot Tupac. Yeah, if Whether not, not himself, like, one of his... Keefe D or yeah. the, one of the dudes in the car. Somebody I think, like, shot Orlando Anderson, Orlando. Keefe D and, Keefe and Orlando Anderson's uncle were all in the same car together. Keefe and, D is, or, wait, yeah, he is his uncle. Okay. Yeah. So, I think... Either Keefe D or Orlando Anderson pulled the yeah. trigger. Right. That's, that seems that's to be the I most honestly believable credible thing. Yeah. yeah. 
It's the most boring theory and the most obvious theory. And yet at Occam's but, Razor, it's probably the most likely. Yeah. But these theories are the ones that I want to be true. Yes. Um, so, yeah, the theory, of course, is that he faked his own death right. in order to escape the spotlight for whatever reason. Um, the most popular place that people think he is is in Cuba. Yep. Why? Um, why that is? Why that is, his aunt is in Cuba. And his mom. And his mom? Yeah. Oh, wow. His mom originally escaped to Cuba. Oh, damn. A, his aunt also funny, escaped to Cuba. A funny Shakir? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. No, he... So, evidence includes the seven records released after his death. Right. Um, a supposedly fake autopsy photo. His mother's choice of words after he died were that her son Tupac, quote, chose to leave quietly. Which yep. is an interesting thing to say no matter what, because, again, according to the reports of how he died... I mean, she she opted to stop his medical treatment, but he went into cardiac arrest. Like, right. this wasn't a situation where he was, you know, sick for a long time or something, like, recovering, and he was finally, like, give up. You know, I don't, like, unplug me or whatever. Right. Like, he was not in a state to say, I don't want this anymore. No. So, and he'd only been in the hospital for a few days. Like, this wasn't, like, a long process. So, like, the wording that he chose to leave was... Strange. Odd. And again, like, him dying of cardiac arrest, like, was probably not a quiet death either. Like... If we're talking right. his literal cause of death, that wasn't like a peaceful way yeah. for him to go. So, and of course, he's not the first musical artist for people to claim is still alive after they died. Right. Jim Morrison and Elvis and all kinds of people. I uh, honestly, from my like research into various people who I think have faked their death, mm. his is honestly like the most credible. Yeah. I could fully believe that he did this. A, the precedence of his mom escaping to Cuba and his aunt escaping to Cuba. Yeah. Um, just the fact that the injuries that he received weren't life threatening. Mm. Like he was hit in the chest, but all it did was puncture his lung. Right. Being shot in the lung is a very survivable injury, mm. and so it's very possible that he was hit in the lung and was in the hospital, fully conscious for a while. Yeah. Like they'd have to like deflate your lung or whatever, like kind of do whatever to make it heal. But like it's very conceivable he was alive and conscious and was able to make decisions like, "Hey, I want out of the rap game." fake my death like yeah. let's figure this out yeah he was only in that coma because he kept trying to move around or not was, was he in a coma or was he or was that just the story yeah we don't fucking know was he just conscious in there like yo i owe death row three million dollars yeah suge knight's trying to kill me oh well, yeah this is obviously like a high stress me? situation in general he had like a lot of people after him yeah and a lot of like just shit from all these different people i would be fascinated to see what happened with tupac's like bank account after yeah, he died. I know. Because, like, wherever that money went, like, what if it just, like, got liquidated and, like, put in, like, his mom's account or something? Right. I and could like, hey, they're hanging out together. Right. In, yeah. In Cuba. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, some odd things. Um, this would kind of set up the idea that he was, you know, in on this whole situation from the beginning. Um, he apparently was known to wear a bulletproof vest. Yeah. He was, like, obsessed with protecting himself. He had had another shooting two years before that. And that particular night, he did not wear it, which seemed odd. He was going to, like, a very high profile, this Mike Tyson fight in Vegas. Right. He's got a whole entourage with him. He's going to a club afterwards. Like, why would you not wear it? Right. Um, so that was odd. Also, again, the um, last minute decision to not have the bodyguard and his fiance in the car. Right. I wonder why he didn't want them in the car. Maybe right. because he knew there was going to be a shooting. Right. Um. He was very swiftly cremated the day after his death in a private ceremony that Suge Knight apparently paid three million dollars to secure. What? Which? Yeah. Why does that cost three million dollars? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the cremator listed Tupac's body as being uh, six feet tall and weight as two hundred and fifteen pounds, while his driver's license identified him as five ten and one hundred and sixty eight pounds. Not necessarily a thing. I mean, your driver's license could say you literally tell them what your like height and weight is. So right. whatever. But I don't, definitely don't think. Like looking it's at like pictures a 50 of Tupac, pound discrepancy. That's, yeah, that's I don't think lot. Tupac weighed two hundred and fifteen pounds. No, like seeing pictures of him at the time, twenty five no. year old, like little skinny dude. Right. Pretty sure he was not two fifteen. No, I fully agree. Um, so that's kind of odd. Um, the cremator then retired, vanished, and has never been heard from since. A planned <sighs> memorial, which press were already going to be banned from, uh, was shelved at the last minute, which means that Suge Knight and that cremator were the only people who saw his dead body. Yeah. Not even his mom, because she was in Cuba. Right. That's um, super suspicious. Yeah. That's a, so suspicious. I know. That part, again, like, alone is super weird. Um, a 2010 interview with Treach? T 
Do you know this guy? Treach. Another rapper. Sounds familiar. <laughs> um, I don't know. T R E A C H. I guess it could be pronounced a different Treach. way. I'm gonna pronounce it Treach. I want. I want to say I've heard in a rap song Tre Young Treach. Young, yeah. I don't know. Um, but he was asked a apparently off the record question in 2010 of is Tupac really dead? And he apparently answered seemingly very assured. Last time I saw him, he was in Cuba, man. <laughs> so, yep. um, yeah, further fueling the fire is the fact that his aunt, Asada Shaku, is a political activist and a former Black Liberation Army member who was granted political asylum in Cuba in 84 after fleeing prison in the U.S. So the story is very wholesome that he went to Cuba to join her. I believe it. Yeah. He wanted to escape the life of a rapper and chill with his aunt and his mom. Tupac was definitely more of, like, a poet and, like, activist, more so mm. than, like, a... He definitely, like, had anger in him from, like, the political, like, issues that he fought for. Yeah. But, like, he wasn't a gangster rapper. Like, I right. feel like he he was, like, a sort of, like, poet playing a gangster rapper to kind of communicate with the audience he was trying to communicate with. Yeah. Which was, like, you know, hip-hop fans that he grew up going... Like, grew up with in Compton or whatever. Yeah. But, like, he himself was not like that. And so it would make a whole lot more sense that he would retire somewhere like Cuba and live, like, the life of, like, an exiled intellectual. Yeah. Then go out in a blaze of glory like I, a gangster like, rapper. I hope it's true. I hope I he's there. I really just hope hanging so. Out. I hope in some day he, like, comes out. Yeah. How just like, hey. sick would that be? Yeah. After, like, Suge Knight's dead and some other people are dead, he's just yeah. like, hey. Right. By the way. Suge Knight's already in prison. He's already in prison for a while. Yeah. Like, so. Probably for the rest of his life. Um... Suge Knight himself has even publicly doubted the validity of his death, which is interesting. Um, he spoke out from jail in a recent documentary stating, quote, when I left that hospital, me and Pac was laughing and joking. I don't see how somebody could turn from doing well to doing bad. Um, and in 2014, he stated on camera that, quote, Tupac's not dead and is, quote, somewhere smoking a Cuban cigar. Hmm. Um, Suge himself was shot six times in a nightclub attack just six months after that. So if we're going on the idea that people are being taken out for... Speaking out about this situation, Suge Knight right. obviously didn't die after the attack, but right. he was shot six times. That was attempted to be a murder. Oh, yeah. That's legit. Yeah. Um, okay, so my favorite theory. <laughs> my favorite theory. Lay it on me. The Machiavelli Casanova theory. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yes. Fuck yes. <laughs> so good. Okay, so Tupac was a big fan of Niccolo Machiavelli, yep. who if you don't know, which I know you know, but oh, no. listeners. Yes. Uh, Renaissance philosopher and politician who advocated the faking of one's own death in order to gain advantage over their enemies. Yep. Um, he's best known for his book, The Prince, essentially a how-to guide designed to instruct a prince on how to rule his kingdom, which is very different than most other guides at the time who told you to be pious and moral. Um, his idea was to be ruthless in the pursuit of power. Oh, yeah. It's better to be feared than to be loved, um, which is how the phrase Machiavellian... Right which means cunning, scheming, and unscrupulous, especially in politics, came to be coined. Yep. So Tupac was a big fan. In 96, Tupac's final album, The Don Caluminati, The Seven Day Theory, was released, not under Tupac's name, but under his new stage name, Machiavelli. M-A-K-A-V-E-L-I. Obviously mm -hmm. a play on Machiavelli. Yeah. Um, but people have also theorized that it's meant to be rearranged into Am Alive K. Got okay. it? Yeah, yeah Okay. <laughs> I'm following. The K is thought to not just be a shortening of OK, but to be a hint to his present day whereabouts, short for Casanova the Don, who is a rapper who is widely believed to be a new alias for Tupac. Okay, so I'm with it until you until you re rearrange the letters. And I know, just, the rearranging that's, is not. That's, 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 that's a little flimsy. Not my favorite thing. But, but. Casanova the Don. Yeah. The vocal similarities are indisputable. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Casanova has collaborated with Hussein Fatal and Young, both of whom are members of Tupac's rap crew, The Outlaws. Yep. Which by itself, I mean, there were a million members of The Outlaws, as we yep. realized just from this story. Like, every <laughs> name I've mentioned is, like, a member of The Outlaws. Yeah. Um, but Casanova released a song called Mystery in 2012, 16 years after the supposed death of Tupac, and the lyrics, which I'm going to read for you, are... Like, there's no, there's no way around. No, there's really no. At least the intent of this song. And to our listeners, please go listen to yeah. this song. Listen to a Tupac song. Yeah. And then listen to this guy rapping. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's, like, it gives you chills. The voice is a little deeper, but, like, it would be 16 years later. Right. His voice isn't going to sound exactly the same. No, definitely not. And he might even consciously be, maybe he was either consciously lightening his voice as Tupac, or he now he's consciously deepening his voice as Casanova the Don. Yeah. It's 
pretty amazing. And of course the idea, because like there are photos and whatever of Casanova the Don, but the idea is that it's Tupac right. working well, through okay. with somebody else. Another rapper, MF Doom, mm. has had other rappers perform as him. Because he sure. his, his whole thing is wearing like a metal mask. Oh, that's right. So he will have other rappers perform as him at other shows. That's awesome. Back before people knew what he looked like. Right. So like there's precedence and there's been things since of rappers having like imposters and lookalikes yeah so i'm just saying it's totally a thing adds credence all right so the lyrics of mystery it's been 16 years still stuck in a dark cage living in my mind of that fateful day 9796 i remember like it was yesterday i got a lot to say i'm not gonna say the n-word so no don't i don't know what to say instead of it say person okay thug person love thug person cry how the media said that i died but i'm still breathing who do you believe in? Everything that was said was lie. See, listen, we were in Vegas getting faded in the city of sin. I had a bad feeling that night after the fight at the MGM. Can you feel me? We left the telly on the way to the club. These hoes pulled up right beside us. My adversary is steading on plotting my death, squeezing bullets to the name on the chest. I heard gunshot, but it got weird. Instead of bullets, only smoke appeared. Next thing I knew, some man in a suit just standing there. They opened the door, grabbed the person by the feet. Let my head hit the concrete. It was a nightmare dragged on the street, scars on my back, looking at the white Cadillac. Before the black back, over my head, I couldn't believe what I happened to see. A person who looked just like me, dressed like me in the passenger seat, but it can't be me. Sitting here next to Suge, another four shots and it can't be good. I gotta find a way, that is what I say. Next thing I know, a blow to the head. Like, the video is just straight up. Them in Vegas. Oh, yeah. Really bizarre, actually, if you watch the video. Like, some of the shots that are clearly, like, you know, they recorded for this video, Tupac and Suge Knight in the car, and, like, it looks exactly like Tupac. Hmm. Which I'm sure can be, you know, whatever, I think but... I've seen somebody who played Tupac in something, and he looks fucking just like him. Yeah, I'm sure there's, like, some crazy look alike, <laughs> Or it's just him. Or it's Tupac. Or it's just him. Um, so that's my favorite theory. Um, there is this random theory of Sevens, which I don't even know why I'm mentioning it, but it's just one of the theories. Okay. I don't really know why people think that this is, like, relevant. Um, there is, of course, that connection to his, like, seven-day theory that he mentions in his last album. Yeah. Whatever. Um, but he was shot on the 7th of September, age 25, 2 plus 5 is 7. He died at 4.03, 4 plus 3 is 7. And his birthday was the 16th of June, 1 plus 6. Once, like, you, okay. once you start adding numbers together, I, 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 I lose it. Like, well, and then, like, even, like, his birthday, like, the 16th of June, but you're just adding together the date, like, all right. The 16th of June, but what about the years? Right, exactly. Like, like you gotta add in the years And there there's too. no, re- like, there was no real, like, explanation for, like, why is that a thing? Like, okay, there's just a bunch of sevens. Right. Kind of. Numerology is very much, like, pick and choose. Like, you yeah. gotta, like, oh, like, you add these two numbers together. It's like, what about, like, the seven other numbers that went with that? Well, exactly. Numbers? Yeah, like, what about the year that he was born? Like, well, no, that one doesn't count. Right, that's, that's, that's different. So, okay. And then the most recent thing, October of last year, just a few months ago, um, Suge Knight's son, also named Suge Knight, <laughs> not very convenient, Fucking a. posted a series of creepy Instagram photos, like on his stories, claiming that Tupac is alive and living in Malaysia, not Cuba. He claimed, quote, they were following him. Um, like he had like a video of himself, like saying that they were like behind him in the car. Um, he posted a screenshot of a text message conversation in which some unnamed person tells him, quote, you've said too much time for you to go. Um, he posted two photos of someone he claimed as an older Tupac, one with 50 Cent and one with Beyonce, saying, quote, he never left us, and quote, they'll be after me soon, SMH, short for shaking my head, for y'all, though. Um, but, like, he mentions in one of his posts, like, free Big Suge, or whatever, so it's like, is this just something he's doing to, like, get a bunch of attention to be, like, get my dad out of prison? Right. But, like, Suge Knight's son might know a little bit more, like, he mentions, like, them being after the Knight's you know, the Knight family or whatever. Um, But it was just an odd... Like, people... Everybody that was talking about it described it as creepy. Like, who had seen it. And there were a few screenshots of stuff, but, like, some of them weren't up anymore. So I couldn't see all of it, but it, like, it just was described over and over as being creepy. Hmm. That he just, like, went on this weird rant. Like, these were all just, like, in succession. Like, he all of a sudden just went on this tangent of, like, he's fucking alive. So, it's like, all right. But, you know, again, like, if if anybody would know, wouldn't it be Suge Knight's son, who either Suge Knight... Could have been involved in the cover-up, could have been involved in any number of things, but at the very least might be one of the few people who knows 
that he is still alive and knows where he is. Right. If he was involved with like the memorial service and the cremation all and then stuff, has also yeah. denied over the years, like that he thinks he's dead, like hmm. maybe he knows some shit. So interesting. kind of interesting that Suge Knight is both in the theories of like having been the one who killed him. And then also in the theories of like being part of him not being dead. Suge Knight's definitely involved. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I have for Tupac. Interesting. Yeah. A lot of theories, both about his death and his current life. If I had to pick, I think I believe that I choose to believe that Tupac is still alive, living in either Cuba or Malaysia because Cuba got blown up. Yeah. Not blown up literally, but as in like people knew that he was in Cuba and went there looking for him. Right. Maybe that's why Obama opened up Cuba oh, so Americans can go there because he knew Tupac was there. Yes. Fuck. Yes. That's why Obama did it. Maybe Obama also knows. I would 100% believe Again, that. Again, of all the people. Obama would know that yeah. Tupac's still alive. Tupac would have, like, reached out to him and just been like, hey, yeah. just FYI. And Obama would be cool enough to, like, keep it on the down low. Yeah, he'd be like, of course. I'm just going to open up relations with Cuba. Yeah, it's going to be fine. So I can, like, go there. Right? So, you like, have an, so I can have an excuse to... Did he... Yes. Did Obama travel to Cuba after he opened up relations? I thought that he did. <sighs> I wonder why. <laughs> That's wild. We figured it out. Holy shit. We're cracking the code. Obama's friends with Tupac. Oh. I could have sworn that he did. I'm. I would be surprised if he didn't. Like, if nothing else, like my brain has conjured my own like <laughs> fake memories of Obama like chilling with like some linen shirt on the streets of Cuba. Yeah. Because so, I can just so imagine a, it. A Cuban cigar with Tupac. Yeah, it's so vivid in my brain right now. And probably Jay Z was there and Beyonce just right? because. Yeah. Well, like Jay Z was that, those pictures that Suge Knight's son posted of Jay Z and yes. Beyonce with Tupac. Yeah. Jay Z and Beyonce were tight with Obama. Oh, yeah. They probably still are. Right. They probably like have more for dinner. Oh yeah. Like they're just all buddies. Oh, I love that. Damn Damn it. So God. jealous. Better times. So jealous. Yeah. Nothing good is happening now. Like Kanye West is hanging out with Trump. It's, oh I know. It's God, not a great situation. Gone the totally wrong direction. So, yeah. I used to have so much respect. I know. And now I mean, it's just just a fucking mess. It's just sadness. Yeah. Though in my like recent <clears throat> pregnancy craving state, like I would not have minded being at the White House with like a whole buffet of fast food. Oh, yeah. As embarrassing as that was. Yeah. And it was truly terrible. was. That was terrible for this country. Every person that I saw that defended that, I was just like, you're reaching so hard right now. Oh, yeah. That you're like, oh, but like, we're in a shutdown. He had to get food. It's like he brags nonstop about being rich. Right. And then the best he could do was Wendy's and McDonald's he and Burger King. did not have to use federal money to buy food. He right. He is a billionaire exactly. by his own admission. Yeah. He could have paid himself to get He like, could have had those kids come to one of his hotels. Okay. All right. So, the assassination of Biggie Smalls. Yes. So, uh, Biggie's another one where I wasn't sure, like, what to call him throughout this episode. Yeah. I'm going to call him Biggie. Okay. The Notorious B.I.G. Yeah. Christopher Wallace. Notorious B.I.G. is so formal. So, so formal and so long. Yeah. I'm going to go with Biggie. Biggie. Biggie Smalls, Biggie. Yep. So, um, March 9th, 1997 was when he died. Tupac was 1996. Yep. So, September. Less than a year later. Yeah, like six months later. Yeah. So, Damn. some of the backstory. So, Biggie, obviously, born and raised in New York City. East Coast rapper. He flew to L.A. to film a video for his song, Hypnotize. Wow, great song. Go watch that, oh that my God. video. Go it's watch great, it now. It's wicked 90s, but it's a great video. Uh, great song. It's such a good song. So iconic. Oh so 90s. So 90s. So, he flew to L.A. to make that video. So, he's hanging out in L.A. for a while. You know, he's going back to Cali, as in the biggest song. <laughs> yeah, um, You're going to quote a lot of lyrics that I might oh, not God, yeah. remember off the top of my head. Yeah. So while he was in L.A., hanging out for a while. So he like went there to film the video, but he was also like doing some other stuff, too. He was just taking a trip to L.A. Yeah. It was March in New York City, so it was fucking cold. So yeah. he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to L.A. for a while. I, I would go to L.A. if I could. Can do that. Yeah. So while he was there, he hired security because he feared for his life. He actually cited the murder of Tupac Whoa. as a reason to hire security and the whole East Coast, West Coast feud as a reason to hire security. Yep. So he was definitely like aware of this. The East Coast rapper on the West Coast. Let me just remind you that he had already released an album called Ready to Die. Oh shit, that's right. Okay? That was one. That's more, arguably one of the greatest hip hop albums ever made. Mm. So that's one album that he's released. He's leading up. He's going to release another album soon, but I'm going to get into that later. And the other so album is already dead. <laughs> It's actually called Life After Death. Oh, shit. That's right. Yes. <laughs> so. Oh, no. We're, we're, we're going to get in the timeline uh, of that later. But so. Jesus. Anyways. Okay. So he presented an award at the Soul Train Awards in LA. Okay. 
while he's presenting the award, as he's walking up on the stage, the whole crowd booed him. Whoa. Maybe not the whole crowd, but definite members of the crowd booed him. Audibly yeah. booed him. Enough to hear. Enough to hear. Shit. Um, so that was March 7th. March 8th, he av- uh, attended the after party for Vibe magazine at the Peterson Auto Museum. Interesting. So some random car museum thing. Yeah. Which is weird. Hmm. A weird place to have that. Yeah. Um, but so he attends the museum and he's leaving. Um, he didn't have quite as big of an entourage as Tupac. Mm. He only had two SUVs. Wow. So he's yeah, in one in Biggie's SUV. You got the driver who's G Money. He's driving. Two uh fucking Biggie wow. is in the passenger seat. And then there's D Rock and Lil Cease. Lil Cease. Lil Cease. Wow. Oh. Comes up. Yeah. Okay. So he's he was he was a legit rapper back yeah. then. Yeah. And he was buddies with both. Yeah. Damn. Bouncing all around. Okay. Um, so they're in one SUV, okay? And the other SUV is Diddy. And then the three bodyguards for the entourage. Okay. So I thought it was weird that Biggie, the driver, and then the two other Junior Mafia, which is the, not the record label, but the crew that Biggie was part of, those dudes were all in one car, and yeah. Diddy was riding alone with three bodyguards. Yeah, that's really weird. I thought that was weird. You'd at least want one, you would think, with Biggie. Especially if he's all nervous. Right. Plus, like, you'd think Diddy would want to have, like, a friend in the car and actually, like, three <laughs> bodyguards. He's body just by himself with three bodyguards? Though it makes sense in my brain. Right, like, classic Diddy. Like, totally. he just, like, <laughs> wearing his, like, like puffy white coat, yeah. like... Oh my god, that's right. Sunglasses on like, I'm totally picturing, like, current day Diddy, but we're talking 90s Diddy. Oh yeah, we're talking, like... Late 90s Diddy. Like, music video with the fisheye lens where he's <sighs> all up in it with, like, shiny backgrounds. So good. Oh yeah. No, oh, like... God. One of the, not the greatest era era of hip hop, but like but nostalgia wise, there. one of the greatest eras. of Oh hip-hop. my god! Yeah, so he's just taking up space in his puffy coat. <laughs> That's why you couldn't ride. That's why I couldn't ride. All three bodyguards are probably up in front, like yeah. squeezed in. Diddy's the back with his one coat. He's like laying flat in the back seat, like they have to pull him out by his feet. Like, all all dude. all extra, like yeah. like Diddy, we can't just get a different here. coat. Like, what do you use to like inflate this thing? Just drive, damn it! What do I pay you for? With his mouth just open all the time. <laughs> oh, uh, God. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, so he's just chilling with bodyguards. So, okay, so yeah, so you got the two SUVs. Okay. So they're pulling out of the Peterson Auto Museum. Mm. Just like a couple blocks away, the SUVs stop at a red light. A dark Chevy Impala SS pulls up, and a dude wearing it was a black man in a blue suit with a bow tie. Interesting. Puts a nine millimeter out the window, and fires. It's like, I don't remember the exact number. It's like ten to fifteen shots, mm. roughly the same as Tupac, Damn. into the car. Okay, Biggie gets hit four times. Whoa, so, interesting, right? Just like Almost Tupac, yeah, hit four times, right? Shit. So this is this is where th- there, there's some weird things with this. Okay, so this is 1997. The details of Biggie's autopsy weren't released until 2012. Whoa. So, like, why was there such a gap? Was that when, like, his mom reopened the yeah, she case or whatever? Yeah, she sued the LAPD for, sure. like, wrongful investigation or whatever. So, he was hit in his left forearm, which the bullet traveled down to his wrist. Mm. Oh, God. He was, tra- he was hit in the back, and it traveled to his left shoulder, which didn't hit any vital organs. He was hit in his left thigh, and the bullet traveled to his inner thigh and hit his scrotum. Ugh. And then his right hip, which then went up into his colon, liver, heart, lung, and stopped in his shoulder. Holy shit. So if you listen to what I just said, three of those shots hit him going left to right. Mm. And then one shot hit him going right to left. Interesting. The kill shot went right to left. Huh. The right hip, colon, liver, heart, lung, shoulder. Did you say he was driving the car? He was in the passenger seat. He was in the passenger seat. Hmm. So where did all those bullets come from from the left? Right. It just, it's super inconsistent. Okay, so yeah, the driver was on the right side. So they were shooting into the passenger window. The driver of the car. That was wasn't shot. clear which side of the car they were, he huh. was on. Okay. But still, the fact that they came from two different directions. Either way, it came from two different how. directions. Like, how did, how did it come from predominant? Plus, if he was a passenger, and the shots are coming from the left side, including his left hip yeah. and his left thigh... That's right. pretty low. That seems like that'd be hard to do from outside the car. If you were outside the car on the passenger, or on if you were 
shooting from the passenger window of a car into the driver's window of Biggie's car, mm. the bullets, in order to hit his left thigh, would have to go through the shifter, like the yeah. the mechanics of the car. Weird. And it doesn't seem like that would work. No. And wouldn't hit with enough force to kill Biggie. I don't know how you'd get the angle in general if you were sitting in a car... So you're already, like, you're at a certain height that you can't really change. It's not like you're standing at the window. And And this was a Chevy Impala, so, like, a a short car compared to a black SUV. Interesting. So you would have had to have been, like, standing up in the window, like, shooting in such a way. Hmm. But even that doesn't explain how a bullet goes from his right hip up through all of his vital organs into his left shoulder. Out of his left shoulder. Damn. That's super weird. That's really weird. So, like, that's just inconsistent. That speaks to me that there's more than one shooter. Hmm. That there's not just a single car pulling up next to him. Yeah. Or that maybe there's somebody in the car. I don't right. Know. I was going to say, like, how do you even get a shot through, like, from his hip in general? Biggie was a big dude. There was a, a big lot dude. of, like, there was, like, there was, like, a lot of body to go through oh, yeah. for it to get so from his right hip to his For the right of him, if he's shoulder. in a passenger seat, so again, even if you were shooting from the passenger side, still you'd have to, like, reach into the car, I would think, or shoot through the door yeah, so to have, get have up to go through, through his hip. It would have to go through the car door, huh. then his hip, then his hip bone through all of his organs including his colon and like lower intestines damn and then lodge in his shoulder wow that's weird isn't that weird it's super weird so that's so that and that wasn't released until 2012 damn so that leads me to believe that there was inconsistencies with this murder yeah from the beginning that they wouldn't release that that they would have to like keep a keep a lid on that until 2012 yeah like, that's a long time he was killed in 2000 or i mean 1997 <laughs> 2007 2007 <laughs> I don't know, that's what. Which was still a long time ago, Jesus. Yeah, right. It's 15 years later. His Damn. Things released. That's right. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, after that, um, they basically, Diddy failed to cooperate and instructed other bad boy staff to not cooperate. Interesting. Much like Suge Knight. Yeah. Um, so, there's basically been a few kind of suspects, but never like a coherent, like, idea of what was put together mm. until relatively recently um when biggie's mom violetta valetta um wallace filed a wrongful death or not l- wrongful death but basically filed a lawsuit claiming that the lapd botched biggie's murder investigation yeah and because of that they assigned a new cop to the case who looked at primary witness statements um like police files like he looked at all the information again like fresh and it was all like the primary like actual evidence yeah um he was a now he's retired but he was an lapd officer named greg kading okay um wait a minute yeah yeah same guy yeah he investigated the the tupac one after this as well well he looked at the tupac one in conjunction with it because he believed that to understand biggie's death you had to also understand tupac's death Mm. because their proximity to one another was too close to have been a coincidence oh yeah and wasn't was kating the one that i said thought that biggie was connected i don't think so i can't remember now but i remember him being involved that's crazy yeah they were he was involved in both kating thinks that suge knight hired fellow blood gang member that's right wardell poochie faust to do it so poochie yeah poochie Poochie's the one who probably killed biggie interesting um he paid poochie 13 grand Damn. to kill Biggie, which is not, not that, that much. much money. I mean, like, I don't even know at the time if that was, like, that much money, really. Inflation, not maybe like that would be, like, that even, if that, even with inflation, that was 20 grand. Damn. That's not a lot to kill, like, arguably the, one of the most famous rappers on the planet. Yeah. And granted, hip-hop didn't have as much of a place in the, the, the consciousness of America. Maybe it did. Like, hip-hop was pretty damn big. It was pretty big. It was Big E, at least. Whoa. Um... Part of the of Kading's theory though is that um Biggie's baby mama, Teresa Swan, okay. um, was paid twenty five grand by Suge Knight to set up meetings and basically help set Biggie up mm. and talk to people who would help coordinate to understand where Biggie was gonna be that night Jesus. or where would be the best place to kill him. Suge Knight. Should fucking night. What are you doing, dude? Is involved in some way with both of these murders, what and I will go to my life? grave believing it. Yeah, he, yeah, he's involved in some way, for sure. Yeah, and like, like I was saying, Tupac's worth more to Suge Knight dead than alive. Mm. Just like Biggie is worth more to Diddy dead than alive. Yeah, because 
just like Tupac, there's been a million records that have been released of Biggie's since he's died. Yeah. And who is making all that money but Diddy? Right. Diddy's super rich off of Biggie. Diddy is not a good rapper. No. He's, he's not. not. He he's not. never been great. And he is definitely, like, very washed up at this point. But I'm sure he's still getting fat residual checks just from Biggie's music. Yeah. I, st- I still stream Biggie's songs on Spotify. Who's getting paid for that? It's not Biggie. Diddy. Diddy. <laughs> Damn Fucking it. Diddy's getting paid. You're putting that. money in Diddy's pocket. Diddy, dirty money. His money is dirty. Damn it. Because he's profiting off the death of who was supposed to have been one of his best friends. Yeah. Yeah. Disappointing. Um, unlike the Tupac assassination, there's not a lot of conspiracy theories about Biggie Smalls. Mm. It's a it's considered to kind of be like an open and shut gang related case. And it's almost tacked on as like a footnote in Tupac's murder. Yeah. Tupac, I think, because he was more of a outspoken sort of activist figure there's more conspiracy theories about him mm. biggie was just more of a you know just a rapper he was just like you know doing his own thing one of the greatest to ever do it one of the greatest flows uh, maybe not the greatest like lyrical content <laughs> but like in terms of like listenability <laughs> listenability biggie is one of the greatest of all time he's amazing i could listen to almost any biggie song and even if the rest of the song is trash yeah Biggie always has a good verse. Oh, yeah. Um, He's fucking great. Side note, the car that Biggie was shot in Mm. was selling in 2018. As of March 2018, it was for sale for $750,000. Wow. Again. not really that much. Not very much. Not much. That's, like, disrespectful to Biggie's memory. Also, like, weird that anybody would want that car. The one for Tupac was was for sale, too. I don't know (sighs) how much it was. I mean, like, wasn't, like, the Bronco that OJ drove for sale at some point, too? Probably. It's all that murderabilia. Right. People who buy, like, paintings by John Wayne Gacy. Fucking creepy. Yeah. I would I don't, never... I don't get into that. No. Like, Bad I'm all energy. about weird energy. Yeah, I don't want that shit in my house. No. Like, especially, like, a painting by John Wayne Gacy, because that's just imbued with terrible psychic energy. Yeah. But, like, even, like, the car that Biggie was in... Right. ...is just, like, disrespectful to his memory. Yeah. You know? Did he die on the scene? Or did he go to the hospital and die there? I think he either died on en route or very soon after receiving the damn. I was gonna say he had more serious injuries. Yeah, I mean that like, that bullet, bullet going through his heart cut him up. Fuck his heart and his lung and his colon. So damn. he was just massively internally bleeding. Yeah. Damn. Um. Yeah. The after Tupac and Biggie died, Nas, one of the greatest rappers of all time, damn. <laughs> was quoted as saying, "That was nearly the end of rap." Wow. Because that was like we were saying before. That was a huge hit. In such a short time. Oh, yeah. I knew going into this that they had died pretty close together, but I was not prepared for six months. Right. Six months. Okay. And that's that brings me to my sort of my last point here where... So there was a, there was a level of Tupac having sort of knowledge that he was going to die soon. Mm. Um, his mom saying that, you know, he chose to go quietly. Um, him sort of like leaving his fiance to travel in a different car. Yeah. Which may or may not have been him you know, faking his own death. It could have just been him, you know, having some sort of like prophetic knowledge of what's going to happen. Yeah. So Biggie released the album Ready to Die while he was still alive. Um, So he was due to release his album Life After Death, March 25th, 1997. Oh, damn. Just a reminder, he died March 9th, 1997. So he died 14 days before Life After Death came out. Wow. Or was scheduled to have come out. That's wild. Life after death. Oh, shit. 14 days after his death. That's awesome. It's wild. It gives me chills. Yeah. Because, like, like, there's some weird level of, like, almost knowing. Like, there's tons yeah. of, when you go back into, like, his lyrics, like, you can see that, like, he had the knowledge that he was going to die. Yeah. Before he, like, reached an old age. Which, again, is really disappointing for both of them because they were both really young and both super talented. Right. And both, like, on this huge upward trajectory. And we're both totally under the thumb yeah. of somebody more powerful than they were who yeah. was, like, pulling the puppet strings. More powerful and just more, like, ruthless. Ruthless and willing to just, like, exploit their talent for yeah. their own financial gain. Yeah. Tupac had Suge Knight. Biggie had Puff Daddy. Yeah. And both of them were just, like... <laughs> you said... Can't even say you it. You said Puff Daddy. <laughs> Damn it. I just saw you try to be serious <sighs> for, like, two seconds. I can't take that name seriously. Started to crack. Uh, Sucks though. I would have loved to see yeah. what like Biggie and Tupac did later in life. I know, I know. I don't have as much faith for Biggie because look what happened to Diddy. Yeah. Maybe they would have broken up though, and Biggie would be more akin so. to like the Wu Tang Clan, what they're doing nowadays. Right. A lot of respect for them. Yeah. 
I know. I'd be really curious to see what they had, like what they would have done after that. Tupac would have been like a political activist. I mean, on one hand, like you have to with people like this, you always have to wonder like if they hadn't died at like the height of their popularity, like would they still be? Would we still as, call them the greatest of all time? Exactly. Like because we still consider both of them to be one of the greatest rappers of all time. Oh yeah. And maybe part of that is because they died. You know, they like went out with a bang. They never had his chance to <sighs> just like phone it in. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, it, like, all kinds of celebrities like that, like Jim Morrison and, like, all kinds of people who died in their youth while they were still, like, insanely popular. Right. It's like, we still consider those people to be legends. Right. Which we might not know. I don't consider Diddy to be a legend anymore. No, he felt, I mean, not that he was ever up. But he, he was never was huge, but off. he was way bigger. And there's a lot of people, like, at the time that were, like, pretty big. And now you're like, what the fuck are they even Look doing? Look at Mace. Yeah. Mace oh, was man. big when Biggie was big, and he, he was. dropped off, became a preacher, and tried to come back, and it yeah. wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. No. I liked Mace at the time, too. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. were like, yeah, they were all kind of the same, you know, Mace I remember listening to all of them. Bad boy. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But. Well, uh, there's always, as I, I listen to a lot of hip hop, mm. and you can, there's a lot of, like, references to self-destruction yeah. in a lot of hip hop songs. Um, from Capital Steve's had sort of some sort of knowledge of his impending early demise, mm-hmm. Biggie, Tupac, um, Mac Miller recently. Oh yeah, that's overdosed. Right. Jesus Christ. Um, but when you go back and you listen to a lot of his songs, like he he knew he was gonna die young, mm. and it's really like kind of chilling to listen to some of his songs, and it's like, yeah, oh wow, like that was he knew it, and mm-hmm. like even if he didn't know it, like he wouldn't have been surprised. You right. Know? It's crazy. Which is like it's one of the things I thought about with uh, Tupac almost that you can look at him not wearing his bulletproof vest and, like, not having his fiancé and stuff come in the car as, like, he knew he was going to be set up to look like he died. But you can also see that as, like, if there was evidence among people who knew him that he was tiring of being in this spotlight and being, like, watching his back all the time, there's some thought of, like, maybe he knew. I mean, not that that fight was necessarily on purpose, but, like, maybe, you know, he did that kind of in this bout of, like, self-destruction, like, fuck it. Yeah. And... Who knows if he could have gotten tipped in some way or if he just knew that that particular guy would come after him. I mean, it might not have been planned, planned. Right. Again, it was a pretty last minute thing that he didn't, like, get his bulletproof vest, that he didn't have his fiance come in the car. Like, what if he just had a feeling like this might be the night? Right. And not that he faked it, but that he just knew. Yeah, like, kind of yeah. like, a, like a fuck it. Like, what right. if, he what had if already something, been shot. something happens and it happens? Like, I'm, yeah. like, I think with people in 21st century... I guess that was still technically the 20th century, but people nowadays, we don't tend to respect mental illness and we don't think about mental illness quite mm. a bit. But what if like Tupac was like manic depressive or had manic depressive episodes yeah. and he did this either during a manic or depressive episode where he was either, fuck it, I might die anyways. Why not just take my bulletproof vest off or a manic episode like, fuck it, nobody can touch me. I'm like untouchable. Right. Either way, it could have been re- related to some sort of, if not mental illness, maybe some sort of like like stress induced not psychosis because that's a strong word for it but just like Mm. the pressure of being in the spotlight and not really having healthy coping mechanisms to sort of like process your own fame and fortune i can't imagine what it would be like to like be famous in general but also like for both of them to be in such a state in their careers and their lives where they're He's wearing a bulletproof vest. They have bodyguards with them and, like, a whole entourage and stuff, like, to protect them. Meanwhile, you have this person above you who's just pressing you to make money and trying to make these decisions for your career that you may or may not agree with. Right. And all these people love you. All these people hate you. You're still kind of involved in gang violence. Yeah. But you're also, like, on the cover of magazines and, like, on TV and stuff. Yep. You have to, like, put out artistic... Like, you want to express yourself artistically, but then you also have to, like make money for your label because you owe them $3 million in yeah. Tupac's case. And there's all this pressure being put on you from so many different sides and you just want to chill and keep doing what you were doing, Yeah, which is like enjoying yourself and making hip hop music. And all of a sudden there's all this pressure put on you. Yeah. So maybe I, I would not be surprised at all if Tupac was like, fuck this. I'm going to um, fake my own death yeah. and mo- I'll just move in with my mom in Cuba. Right. She'll help set me up. She yeah. knows how to do all that. Why not? I believe it. Yeah. I want to believe. I know. I know. I want to believe he's still alive. So I'm going with that. Again, not the most credible, but the thing that I choose to believe is that hopefully he's happy somewhere. I wish I could say the same about Biggie. 
Yeah. I'm pretty sure Biggie's really dead. Pretty sure he's dead. Yeah. Sadly. Or he was just better at faking his own death. He could have just been better. He was, like, so good that nobody even questioned it. Right. They were like, no, he's definitely dead. He's, like, good. Good. Like, like Tupac's probably stressing all the time. He's like, God damn it. Why did I have to? Yeah. Stop. 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 Stop posting pictures of me with fucking Stop. Beyonce and Jay-Z. Yeah. Like, get out of that. Damn it, Obama. Open up the borders. But then he's got Casanova the Don. He's like, well, I really do feel like putting out some more music. Right. So. Well, I bet that would be frustrating. Right. Or living your whole life in obscurity. or used to, like, you want people to listen to your music not yeah. necessarily to be famous but you want to like have people hear your artistic output again yeah he's still an artist yeah he's still a poet so he still has things to say and then he's all of a sudden like shit i have to live in obscurity right think so, about all the things that tupac would have to talk about politically oh that God. have happened in the last 20 years jesus christ yeah i know it's a damn shame it's crazy it's all a damn shame so well yep yeah. That's Tupac and Biggie. Tupac and Biggie. One of our longer episodes. One of our longer episodes. Episode 14. Back after our hiatus. Nice. And, yeah. If you enjoy exploring the unknowable, make sure you head to Apple Podcast and leave us a five-star rating and review us while you're there. Check us out on Patreon and check back frequently because we'll be adding a lot of cool things as the weeks go on. Yep. Um, Make sure you find us on Facebook and Instagram. Add us, like us. Find us anywhere you listen to your podcasts. And if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, if you have a topic for a future episode, DM us, comment, do whatever you got to do to let us know. Hit us up. Hit us up. I'm Justine. And I'm Gray. And this has been... Unknowable. Unknowable. Love you.